me about fielding and this week I brought you to a place that once used to be the largest woolen mill in the world. Now it houses Victorian ghosts and poltergeist activity. Welcome to Most Haunted and to Armley Mills. Although Armley Mills has a history dating back as far as the 16th century, it wasn't until Colonel Thomas Lloyd bought the mill in 1788 that it became the world's largest woolen mill and was the centre of employment for this whole community. Work in the mill was hard and the hours long, and children as young as seven were employed, and as a result, there were many accidents and deaths. The mill was bought by Benjamin Gott in 1804, but it was almost completely destroyed by fire less than a year later. Undeterred, Gott rebuilt the mill we see today and offered better working conditions than people had been used to. He expanded his business and became one of the largest employers in Britain. After his death in 1840, his sons carried on his legacy. Over the years, the mill changed hands, but with changing industry and working practices, its decline was inevitable and it closed its doors as a working mill in 1969, reopening as a museum in 1982 as a historical monument to all that was good and bad in a time of the great British industrial growth. With a history of so much hardship, torment and death, no wonder Armley Mills is said to house a multitude of ghosts. A tall man with a wooden cane is said to wander floors. A sinister apparition is seen in the cinema room and the ghosts of children have been witnessed around the machinery. With this and stories of poltergeists, disembodied voices, full apparitions, I had to bring my team to Armley Mills. These huge monstrous machines would have seen many children, some as young as six, working around them. Could their spirits be the ones responsible for so much poltergeist activity that happens specifically in this area? is now known as the cinema room, though there are different opinions as to what it was before. One thing is for sure, though, is plenty of paranormal activity. Disembodied voices, dark shadows are often seen, and the seats move all on their own. amongst the machinery were commonplace during the mill's heyday. Could the paranormal activity witnessed here belong to the unfortunate few that lost their lives? And what of the Victorian gentleman? His ghost has been seen many times and he's wearing a top hat and using a cane. Who could he be? We have 24 hours to find out the mysteries of Armley Mills. With such a large location, it's always good to talk to an eyewitness to get their thoughts. Right, we're currently sat in the cinema. Um, obviously, this wasn't a cinema when it was a working mill, so we've got two lots of, of spirits in here. We have the spirits of Amley Mills and the spirits that have come with the fixtures and fittings of the cinema. We get lots and lots of orbs. We do have a gentleman that sits in this seat constantly. He's permanently sat here. He never moves. He doesn't move about. He sits here. Not, not a very nice gentleman. The first time I worked with, with my colleague, we came down to lock up. And obviously, at the end of the evening, we have to come in and check there's nobody in here. We've been doing this all evening, hoping for something. I came to check in here. I knew we were sat there. I saw somebody sat there. So sat on me and it made me run. <laughs> um, we had some guests that came in here once, they came on an, an event for an evening, purely because they'd been here through the day, took some photos and got people sat in the back row. There was nobody else with them. We, we, because we're a museum, we do get different exhibitions brought in, so they come in for a certain length of time and then go out. We had a fabulous one in not so long ago, and it was some clocks. They were absolutely amazing. And one evening I was walking around, making sure everybody's where they should be, and I did a double take as I was going past the clocks and saw a gentleman there. 
absolutely so. I'm as clear as, as, clear as I can see anybody. Um, knew exactly what he's wearing and everything. And then when I looked again, he'd gone. And it was a little stoutly man, a little bit like um, Albert Tatlock off on Coronation Street. And he was cleaning it. On this floor again, further, further down, we've got sewing machines. And when you walk in through, you can see the ladies sat sewing. And I, I'm presuming they must have been really happy um, because they're humming and singing and you constantly, you can hear the buzzing of the machines, but you can hear them, <laughs> you hear them all the time. And that, that's quite nice. There's nothing intimidating about that. It's, it, it's just, it's really pleasant when you're walking through, you hear this humming and singing in the background. It was time to see what Glenn Hunt had to say about this imposing building. So, Glenn, what do you make to this place? Well, psychologically speaking, this place messes with your head already, doesn't it? I mean, just look at it. Straight away, you're thinking of things that happened here previously. It's obviously got some kind of history behind it. And because you can see all this, you imagine yourself living in that particular era, don't you? And you imagine the children jumping in and around the machines, maybe limbs getting caught in them as well, all kinds of horrible accidents. And that's what we're imagining, even before we've started the investigation. I suppose it's quite nice, really, because on the walls there's great big photographs of how the place used to be. So you see sort of people working at the looms and it kind of gives you more of an impression of, of how the place would be. Yeah, but exactly that's the problem with a place like this. Because it's dressed this way, uh, we need to, you know, wipe the slate clean and just imagine it as a regular building and investigate it on its own merits because already our minds are charged with what once has happened here. What do you make to the poltergeist activity that's been reported? Apparently bobbins have been known to be thrown about and people sort of uh, say that they could belong to the ghosts of children. Yeah, these are stories that have come from people on tours, I understand. Until we experience things like that for ourselves, it's, it's all hearsay at the moment, isn't it? What about the ghost of the gentleman that's been seen many times by people that work here and visitors? This, this tall gentleman with a top hat and you can hear the tap tapping of his cane as he supposedly walks along. I find that fascinating. I hope we see him tonight. Well, again, it's a, it's a product of its, of its era, isn't it, really? You're walking through a venue like this, you're seeing the machines, your mind's already wondering as to what happened, how people were. There's even great big posters on the wall of how people used to dress. It could have been just somebody with a, who was a bit short-sighted, the light's not so bright, you can just see an image of somebody straight away. Oh, did you see that man with the top hat? No idea what you're talking about. Now, tonight, Eamon's going to be doing an experiment, and I know we're going to talk to him in depth in a little bit, but excited about that? Yeah, anything that will try and draw out some evidence of the paranormal is ultimately what we're here for. And rather than just it be hearsay or, you know, stories third or fourth told, then it's going to be interesting if we can find something for ourselves. I'm particularly interested in finding out exactly if we can get some more evidence tonight. Now, this is a great location, um, not only because of its history, history uh, and the huge size of it but also you know we're quite away from a lot of people there's no sort of roads that are nearby so if anything sort of stops moving around we can't put it down to passing juggernauts or, and we're not on the flight path uh, that I'm aware of so to me it's quite interesting if something does happen yeah no you're right because there's all kinds of things I mean a lot of this machinery is locked off so if we see something like this moving, then, you know, we've got to start questioning as to what's causing it because it can't be any of the things that we've, you know, you've just pointed out. And, and similarly, I don't know if you noticed, it actually feels quite warm in here. So if we start to feel that the temperature's dropping for some reason, then, you know, that warrants further investigation, I think. Also, we're right by the water as well, which is a, a supposedly a massive conductor of psychic energy. Um, so we've got everything here, haven't we? We're isolated, we're by water, we've got great stories, lots of people are seeing uh, full apparitions and poltergeist activity. So hopefully we should definitely get something tonight. Well, it's going to be interesting because obviously when the lights go out, we can't see a single thing. That means we can't see the machines straight away. That resets our brains. So we can't use these to influence any decisions of, of what we're thinking and experiencing. It was time for Glenn, Fred and myself to have a closer look at the activity around Armley Mills. I have to say that this is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of my most favourite places I think I've ever investigated because there's so much to it. There's so many different areas and it's huge. Massive. And this bit we're in now 
is slightly different to the rest because it's more modern. It's not modern, it's an old place, mm. but if you look around here, this is a place where we used to cut the suits out. Yeah. This is where they stitched them up. And the well-known high, um, high street tailors, they used to take the orders for the suits, 55 shillings for a whole suit, send it here, they used to make it, send it back to the shop and you picked it up the same week. So yeah, this is quite, it's quite a nice little area. <laughs> and again, like all the levels on the building though, what you're seeing is obviously a, a genuine site of how things used to be. You can yeah. almost imagine the workers sat here at the stitching machines doing all the work and already that's prevalent in your mind anyway. Uh, and it's just so interesting to see that with the lights switched off, that's going to be out of our mind straight away because we won't be able to see a thing and that resets your brain. I think it's going to be very frightening with all the lights switched off in this particular mm. building. A couple of words that used to describe these mills, of course, is dark and satanic, isn't it? Well, that was a thing. Yorkshire had that reputation of having dark, satanic mills. There were songs written about it, poems. The thing, it, the, how it got the name was the dark, satanic mills is because the owners of the mills treated their workers so brutally and badly. 16-hour days, six-year-old children would work from six in the morning till seven in the evening. They'd stand there for hours with their hands up, wanting to go to the toilet. And there was one little girl, a little boy, sorry, died because the owner wouldn't let him go to the toilet. He just died. There's another six-year-old girl who had her leg caught in one of the machines that we see further on down, the older part of the place. And she had her leg amputated by a machine. It was a horrible place to work. But things did improve, didn't they? Which, which, yeah. which is going to bring mm. me on to a gentleman. Now, mm. one of the ghosts that's seen here, in fact, the most um, prevalent um, sighting that's seen here is that of a, of a gentleman who's, who wears a top hat yeah. and he has a cane. And you often see him. Many, mm. many people have seen this sighting. Now, you I think it could I, yeah. be an old owner? I didn't know that until you told me that today. But I did some history on the place. And in the end of a 1700, beginning of 1800, the place burnt down. And a guy called Benjamin Gott bought the place, rebuilt it, took on all the workers and treated them like a million dollars. He gave them insurance, he paid their medical bills, he gave them holidays. They'd never seen anything like it. So, so you think that this Gott gentleman mm. is possibly the ghost that everybody's seeing? Well, I think it could be because people like that, when they love their place of work or where they live, they seem to come back to them because they love being there. So yeah, it could be that, yeah. And Glenn, of course, forever sceptical. Well, this is the thing, you know, as I was saying earlier, that this is a working museum that people come and visit day in, day out. We're hearing stories of these looms being thrown around the place. Who's to say isn't just friends larking about, then telling the friends, oh, I got hit by a bobbin on the back of the head today. It was at that mill that we went to visit. You know, it's just, it's just hearsay, isn't it? Could be, but when you get hit on the back of the neck or the back by a bobbin, and you look around and you've got your torch and you go like this and there's absolutely no one in the whole room, then who is it? That's exactly what I want to happen tonight. Well, let's hope it does. I'd love to see a bobbin hit you on the back of the head. <laughs> I'm tonight. sure a lot of people would. <laughs> <laughs> Onwards and upwards. It was time to see what Eamon had in store for us tonight. Right, what's occurring? Hi, yeah. Well, we're going to be doing a test in here because we've been told about some of the reports of uh, noises in here and sightings and different things, so I thought we'd try something a bit different. So we're going to set up audio tones to go out into this room, and the way the EVP works is if there is some kind of entity around here, it will manipulate those tones and turn them into words. So the tones go out here, that's then transferred to a computer upstairs. That's where the filters come into play. It takes the tones out and we're just left with possible speech if there is any activity. And is there anybody going to be in this room while you do this experiment? Well, I was hoping that you might want to ask the questions right. and I'll monitor from upstairs. So me on my own in this room? Yeah. <laughs> What's generating the tones then originally? Okay, so we've got, we're just using, we're using white noise, we're using sine waves just from a computer. But we're going to hear the sound through these four speakers just to try and get as much coverage as we can of the room. The thing is, obviously, if you've ever fallen asleep in front of a TV in the old days when the TV channel would shut down and you'd, you'd get the white noise anyway, you could always imagine you're hearing things anyway, couldn't you? Well, there might be that down here, but what we'll get upstairs is we'll actually get some kind of speech if we can get something. You won't hear the white noise and you won't hear the sine wave upstairs. What you will hear is the end product of that. 
So Yvette, if she's in here, she might hear something. That could be a trick of the mind, but we will certainly hear if there is something upstairs. OK, so anything in your head that you think you're hearing, Eamon will have the evidence if it's really happening. I think it's Absolutely. really exciting. I'm, that's, it's something different. Yeah, definitely. I'm really up for it. Yeah, that's exciting, that. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Good luck to Good me. Luck to you. <laughs> Trying to hide the apprehension I felt, knowing that I was going to spend some time alone here, we needed to start the investigation. So I sent Stuart, Eamon, Fred and Darren to the cinema, while Carl, Glenn, Greg and myself went to the manager's cottage. This is a really spooky place, actually, because it looks like... Well, it's still all dressed, isn't it? Like it was. Still, because only movement. I'm going to put we'll feet up. We'll get that. My feet are up here. That's fine, yeah. How do you feel? I feel fine. I'm waiting for something to happen, though. And I'm looking in each room that you go in, you look into another room or into a corridor, and it's just pitch black. Do you feel like an air of expectation? Yes, I do. Mm. How do you feel, Carl? Um, I have to say, I, I, I feel, um, I haven't felt too bad in this whole place, to be fair. I've constantly felt like something is about to happen or something will happen. But walking into here, it's completely different. I don't like it. I know it, everyone else is saying they're fine. I just don't like it in here. This, and I don't know if it's because it is an old place and it's dressed up like it is. And I'm only seeing things through, you know, through, through a, a lens, but, what? I've just got this horrible feeling. Good. I'm not just saying it. That's exactly right. It's thing. a proper feeling of get out. That's oppressive. Oppressive, like something is in here going get out now. If you're feeling about that we're being urged to get out, yeah. all the more reason to stay. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> what was that? I'm moving my right. No. Was you? No. Did you hear it? I heard it. I thought it was, you you it was like a, a creak of the table. Is it... No, and I hope. Wonder if you get it on camera. It was a. Oh, I thought that was one of us. Yeah. No, that was like a proper. No, it was obvious enough for me to think it was just one of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I, I just thought it was uh, a chair being moved. You know, when it pulls against the floor or no. weights on it. What was that? What was that? What was that? If there's anybody here, can you come towards us? Let us know that you're around. Were you the manager of this place? Is that you? Is that you? What was that? I've just moved my weight. I went from there to there. That sounded like it came from behind you. It did. It, did sound like a, like, it sounded like the cabinet. Something oh, no, was being moved. No. All I did was then I did. I've done it. Just I went from there to there. Mm. That was like furniture moving. Yeah. It's not, I'm not, I'm not moving at all. You're not moving, are you? I can no. tell. Is that... Is that... <sighs> <sighs> the table's moving. <laughs> the table moves. I'm Ta not even kidding. <laughs> the table actually moves. Hello? I wonder if it'll start tipping. If you can hear me, tap on the floor. Tap once for yes. That was what was that was a tap, wasn't it? No, that was oh, me sitting down yeah, that fresh. I've got oh, this over here. strange sensation that I'm being dragged backwards. I thought and I heard of something coming from the sink next like to me. I feel like I'm actually words now. You sound like you are as well. It's almost like the energy's been sapped. If you can oh, hear yeah. us, if you are here, is that, is it's, that gone it's gone down. down. It's gone down. Yeah, it's, it's gone down. down. It's Darren, did you get that? I, I didn't get it. I was on aiming at the oh. time, but right, Fred, you're far enough away from that seat, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Stuart, you can't reach that from where you are, can you? Well, I can. I can do that. Quite open. Yeah. Well, you, you, well, you didn't. You've seen me doing yeah, that. Yeah, I'd, I'd have seen you do that. Yeah. 
it's knocking them under the table now. Hello? Can you make the table move? Sorry, that the furniture's moving around us, yeah. That's me moving them. Ask if you'll make the table move. Can you move the table? Can you move can you can you, can you do anything at all? Move move objects in this room? You feel it trembling? Yeah. That was too... Oh. <coughs> I really feel like Hello? Calling out to anybody that might be here with us now, any spirit people that might want to communicate with us. I know that you're here, I know you can hear me. Can you please say hello? If you move something or make a loud noise now, that means hello. See, I, I am not moving at all. No, no, no. I, I'm not moving, and there's something moving behind me, and I really don't like it. Sorry. Move the table for us if you can. Use our energies. Whoa. Right, so don't touch me on the arm then. So I'm definitely yeah. touch me on the arm. Do you want to swap places? Yeah, there's nothing there. There's nothing, there, there's nothing in here, is there? That, no. Do you want to swap? swap? No, no, I'm kind of happy for it just. Do some, there is nothing. I couldn't touch them. <laughs> okay. Put your fingers, if you can, on the edge of the tables. The tables, just like, so you, that's it. Okay. There you go. But touch is this one. Yeah. Is the table rocking? I can't feel it rocking, but I can hear it tapping. <laughs> Hello? Give me three loud knocks if you can hear me. Hello there. Are you happy? Two for yes, one for no. Okay. Do you want us to leave? Two for yes, one for no. Yes. Can you move the table though, please, before we go? Try and get us to leave. Can we hear your footsteps above us? It's coming from beneath, isn't it? Yeah, you can feel it on the, the table. Well, initially, I thought it was coming up from up there, yeah. but that was obviously wishful thinking because. Well, it was. Maybe you're a dark spirit. Maybe you want to come forward now and show us. Do something nasty to us. Touch Eamon. Touch Stuart. I can feel that around me. Can you? I can feel cold air It's gone me. very cold in here. And I've got that headache back again. How many of you are in this house? Can you knock out how many of you are here, please? Are you a man? Two for yes, one for no. I'm not moving at all. Is something moving behind you, Greg? I was just aware. I felt as if there's been something in the corridor, but because it's it's just pitch black. There's a little bit of light coming in through the windows, but it's just pitch black in the corridor. So I just keep <coughs> looking over my shoulder for shadows and shadows. No, isn't it? I just thought I heard something out there. Seems to it's almost quiet. like behind the break. <coughs> Was that chair? You alright? Yeah, I moved that chair. You did? Yeah. Not, I that. have not, I've, I've stood straight on my feet and nowhere near the legs of the table. Did you not move it? No. This table just moved about six inches. It's just moved away from All I've done is I've stood from there and I've stood up and it moved. Do you going to smell that? I'm going to smell my, I can't my smell feet anything. or where they are. <laughs> yes, I know your feet haven't moved. There's no way you could have just done that, but the table has just leapt away from me. What was that? Hear that? Yeah, it's creaking. Yeah. 
as though someone's sitting in it. Yeah. Are you sitting in this seat? Just put your hand on that seat, Stuart. Just see if you can feel any movement for someone sort of sitting on it. I can actually feel that moving up and down. Is that one of it's you? Pull, that, that seat is actually pulsating. Is that one of you children playing around in here? Well, I'm leaning against mine with my foot, so it could be that making the noise uh, of movement because I've got to lean. I've got to lean. I've got to lean. I've got to lean. Hang on, I've just got that Did on camera. That? I've got it on camera, just oh, flick it up. Only by sheer luck. We're not going to hurt you. Just let us. Only by here. sheer luck. Just touch Stuart or, or anybody. Touch anybody. What was that then? I don't know. It just went by me then. This area here just got immediately active. Something just shot by yeah, me. I yeah. saw it. I, I just I looked at I looked in that position at exactly the same time that you looked in that position. I... This this area just got really hot and really vibrant. Something, I don't know what it was. It was small. I don't know. It was almost like feather shaped. Oops. Shot by me. And it was white. What, here? Here. It just shot by. I think it's got colder there. It's really heavy, that suit, you know? It's got a bit colder there. Come on, then. It's where we, where we need to take ourselves out, but we, we can't get out quick enough. <laughs> That was one of these sticks. That, that wasn't me, because I was here near this chair. It was, it was right none of you. Right, I was right next to Glenn. Yeah. Definitely was one of them. How interesting. Interesting. That's good. <coughs> if only we'd do it again. I'd like that to happen again. See, it won't do it while we're looking at it. I don't know. Our investigation was well underway, so I decided it was time to conduct the EVP experiment, and I, for one, wasn't looking forward to being left alone anywhere in this foreboding location. With everything set and Eamon in place, there was nowhere to hide, and I took my place alone in the cinema. If there's anybody here, if there are any spirit people here with me now, if you can hear my voice, please come and talk to me. Oh, there's actually something talking. I'm very aware that something is behind me. Can you give me a message? Sorry. If there's somebody here now in this theatre, in the cinema, can you make a noise? It was only when we reviewed the footage in the edit did we hear this strange whimpering sound that seemingly came from nowhere. That's creepy. Oh, it's getting very cold. Hello? Are you here? I'm hearing a tapping noise. Are you here now? If there's anyone here, please, if there's a spirit person here with me now. 
There's a lot of talking through this. Wow. Hello? What's that? Wow. When a vet says hello. That wasn't me. Hello? Someone's saying hello back. I've gone so cold. I feel a little bit, um, how can we say, well, not a little bit, very apprehensive now for some odd reason. Are you here with me now? I've got this funny feeling that you are. There's a funny noise coming out of the machine. I feel really nervous now. I feel like I'm not on my own. Hello? Oh, I'm so cold. Are you here? Well, I can confirm upstairs that it seems that somebody is with a vet. Can you say something to me? Please don't touch me. Whatever you do, do not touch me. I do not want to feel you touching me at all. No disrespect, but I certainly don't. There's a male voice that's talking over a vet, that's talking and responding to a vet. And she, she probably doesn't know that right now she's downstairs talking into white noise and someone's just talking away at her. If you could move one of the seats on the, in, in one of these chairs, that would be great. I mean, I certainly won't stick around. I want to hear your voice. That's why I'm sat here. My name's Yvette. What's your name? <laughs> oh, wow. I always feel like when, like somebody's touching the top of my head whenever I do any of these things on my own. Maybe it's nerves. Hello? Who's that? Wow, that's getting louder. Oh, <gasps> did you hear that? That was like two taps. Hello? <gasps> Can you do that again? I don't know if you're picking this up, but there's tapping noises. Hello? Every time she's saying hello, someone's trying to grab her attention. This is actually really clear. Hello? Can you give me two very loud knocks if you can hear me? And again. I think I've got, I've, I've had enough. Um, I can hear the knocks really, lo really loud. OK. Wow, someone is now shouting. That... Someone's actually just shouting just as soon as Yvette's talking. Someone's just shouting before she speaks and it seems afterwards as well. OK, I'm, I'm going to go. Not because I'm being a wet blanket, but I think we've got enough stuff now for Eamon. Hopefully we've got enough stuff there. And uh, thank you very much. I was eager to leave the cinema and join the others, but I couldn't wait to see if the experiment had worked. And boy, did it work. See, this is the kind of thing I was hearing upstairs. When, when you were downstairs in the theatre and... 
you were doing this test, I was hearing all kinds of things like this, and they shouldn't be there. Can you tell me your name? <gasps> that's, a, that's a response straight after, can you tell me your name? Exactly, yeah, let's hear that again. What can is that? Can you tell me your name? Are you here with me now? I'm starting to feel freaked out at this point now because I started to feel a bit... Yes. I'm was, so, starting was this... to feel a little bit cold. So, I mean, you've asked there if somebody's there. Are you here with me now? Got a nice clear yes. Mm. Can you give me a message? Let's just see what we got, because there was a bit of a commotion. Wow, look at all the waveforms, mm. though. Go on. Thank you. Did you get some waveforms? <gasps> oh, 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 play that again. <laughs> Did you get some waveforms? <gasps> 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 Let's get lost. Yeah, get lost. Play it again. <laughs> oh, that's what that sounds to me like. That sounds to me like a woman's voice saying, get lost, as clear as anything. Play it again. It was at that point where I lost all contacts with you. <laughs> Sorry, but does that all <laughs> say to you, get lost? Definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, that says get lost. That's a class A EVP right there. Amazed and astonished at the phenomena we had caught so far, we decided to carry on with a Ouija board to see what else this fear-provoking place had in store for us, and it did not let us down. If there's anybody here calling out to any spirits that may be in this mill, if you can hear my voice, Please, can you move the glass or move this table? The table's moving. I did do that, yeah. Put one, everybody put one hand on the table. I've got one hand in the air from this. Yeah. <clears throat> this table's going to go. It I'm feels like the table's moving. It's rocking, it? isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, it really does feel like oh, it's, it's, it's moving. The table's moving, moving, moving to the right. Yeah. I'm going to move my leg out the way. Wow, wobbling. wow, wow, the table is wobbling. I can feel that. My seat's wobbling. Is that? Everything's yeah. just gone I've a little really bit cold. weird. Wow. My, my elbow is on the corner of this table and my elbow is moving up and down. The table the is vibrating. The glass is getting warm as well. <gasps> the table's oh. moving. The table's lifting. Okay, the table. Oh, 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 Craig! Craig! Oh, you got it? getting that, Craig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see? Oh, <laughs> this is nuts. <laughs> That's Thank amazing. you for that. Can you do it again, please? The glass is moving. Oh! Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> the table's just great. shot this oh, no, way. No, no, it wouldn't. You've got it on the other camera. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, we've got two. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot that was there. That's great. Thank you very much for that. Can you move the table back again to where it was before? Just, Can yeah. you move the table back? Let's see. Is there anything that came up when the table the moved, David? The waveforms are all over the place. Not bad. Can you try? Right, it's moving again. Can you try and? That's it. Come on, keep moving, man. Come on, let's have it move, move any way you want it. Let's see if you can move it significantly. Keep moving without stopping. It's now not touching my leg at all. Everybody, be quiet for a second. I'd love it if the table flipped over. Go. Oh. That okay. would be amazing. We have had it once we've had it. Come on. There it goes. Oh, that, yeah, there it goes. Come on, move the table, move the table, move the table. Lift this table up. I've made sure my, my knees aren't even touching this table now underneath. Come on. I can see how far I'm going all the way from the table. Yeah. Did you feel that? Did you feel that? Well, 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 felt well. lots of things. Seat? <coughs> yeah, I felt the seat. Yeah. <coughs> What, it actually moved? It moved while I'm sat on the seat, the whole thing, the bench just moved. Yeah, Who are you? Can you can you move the glass on its own? If 
put a lot of energy. Can you move that glass on its own? What was that? It's just, just, oh, it's just, ooh, table going. I think that's just water and the 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 boiling. Can you do something stuff. more? Can you lift the table up? Can you do something firm? Something hard, something that will make us jump. If you've got this energy, lift the table up. For this, this is great. My bench, the bench, the bench was sat on the seat. Yeah, it's your it's bench moving. It's, yeah. it was, it was creaking like it's, the table's creaking. Wow. Trying to sit, sit as still as possible. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. It's like being on a ship. It's yeah. that yeah. Yeah. creaking, isn't it? Mm. Can you stop making that noise? Can you start making that noise again? Can you slide the table towards Greg? Really try. It's not been introduced. I'm Greg, by the way, so slide it towards me. Yeah. Oh, oh, there you go, Greg. That's where we go. go. Wow. So if you can move the table towards me, I'm Greg. Move the table this way towards me with the camera. We'll make the table lift. Thank you for this. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was a... But as soon as we sat down, it's a wasn't it? Yeah. Should we have a listen to see what Eamon's got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow, that's just amazing. Yeah. <coughs> I love that, and yet I... Oh! Oh! Every single oh! time I oh! her away. Oh. It's all right, that should have been caught on that. Yeah, yeah we got it on that one. Yeah. <coughs> I love that, and yet I... Oh! Oh! This was the last jump the table gave us, and morning was fast approaching. So I called it a night, and what a night it was. I'm sorry, I just keep hearing something in this room. Whoa. What was that? Can you tell me your name? <gasps> If you are here, right, it's knocking them under the table now. Are you here with me now? Got a nice clear yes. <laughs> We're being urged to get out. Yeah. All the more reason to stay. In. Absolutely. Right, so it touched me on the arm then. So it definitely yeah. touched me on the arm. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to leave. <gasps> what the f That was one of these sticks. That <gasps> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Armley Mills had proved to be one of the most haunted places we had ever investigated. I will never forget a disembodied voice telling me to get lost. Until next time, sleep tight. I need to feel alive.